Welcome into Candlestick Chronicles, a 49ers podcast on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I'm Kyle Madsen. I write about the 49ers over at NinersWire.com, part of the USA Today Sports Media Group. Joining me right now, Chris Biederman of the Sacramento Bee. And we're going to talk about the 49ers-Packers matchup, whether it's the best case scenario for the 49ers, and then all of the good injury news that came out of the 49ers practice on Tuesday. But before we get into all that, we got to talk about our friends over at Lamb Chops. And you know what? SGLambshops.com, the official clothing brand of Candlestick Chronicles. And a big round of applause uh, for the homies over at Lamb Chops who are partnering with the Minnesota Timberwolves for an exclusive Minnesota Timberwolves collection uh, that will be dropping in the Minnesota Timberwolves team store. That is extremely dope. Those guys work super hard, and I love to see... Uh, that come to fruition for them. So a big shout out to our friends at Lamb Chops. Yeah, that's super cool. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin on Instagram throwing throwing out throwing out the Lamb Chops. I uh, I got my freshly washed uh, ash gray hoodie here. Um, obviously when, one of one of my absolute favorites. When I saw the photos of Jordan McLaughlin of the Minnesota Timberwolves walking in and what were clearly Lamb Chops, it was clearly Lamb Chops gear, or at least the 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 sweats were. I did not notice that the yeah. hat and the hoodie were also lamb chops. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Timberwolf is rocking lamb chops. That's tight. Did not know that that was a precursor to this whole thing that they got going on. So that's extremely sick. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So now they've got they've got two awesome deals locked up. Us, obviously, and uh, and you know, the the well known Minnesota Timberwolves. I Pretty mean, cool. I, I think the Timberwolves are kind of looking at this and going, Wow, if we wanna be on the level, if we wanna be a serious NBA franchise, we've gotta We've got to get on the level right. of a of a Candlestick Chronicles podcast, and you know we had a lot of talks exactly. with A Rod, who owns the Timberwolves now, and we're like A Rod, mm-hmm. this is this is the way to go. So, yeah, as I'm sure A Rod's got plenty of plenty of sweats, like sweat shorts, yeah, the mesh shorts, a lot of mm-hmm. zippered pockets in the Rodriguez household. I'm sure, <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh my god, my cat's gonna <laughs> my cat is gonna break something as he walks across my keyboard. All right. Anyways, you can get your lamb chops today at sglambchops.com. Use that promo code candlestick20 for 20% off your order today. Join the herd, man. Everybody's doing it. SGLambchops.com. We're also sponsored by Cooperage Brewing. We love Cooperage. Candlestick Chronicles Hazy IPA is my favorite beer in the world, just in front of Keg Slayer, which is also freaking delicious. And you can get both of those. At Cooper, I don't know if they have cases of Keg Slayer right now, but once they do, order a case because you're not going to regret it. And you can order your case if you're 21 and up and in the state of California at cooperagebrewing.com. You can get a mix and match case. You can get a case of one thing. There's Candlestick Chronicles, Hazy IPA, of course, named after this very podcast. So much good beer. Your favorite brewery's favorite brewery. Yeah, you can get really any type of beer you want. They have a mellow sunshine wheat ale. If wheat ales are your jam, they even have Sparkle Pants Hard Seltzers coming in in different flavors. Uh, Kurt Pale Ale is back. Cold IPA, Straight Marked Hazy IPA, Tommy Pastrami Hazy IPA, Sound is Vibration, which is excellent. A Hazy IPA with Nelson and Mosaic Hops. Um, And Granddaddy Terp, West Coast Double IPA, you can get... um, I mean, everything they make is is excellent. So shout out to Cooperage and and uh, we we very much appreciate them with with the extra batch or extra batches of Candlestick Chronicles to to keep everyone going through the playoffs because I yeah. think that's what's going to happen here. Yep, definitely. Let's talk about the 49ers playoff run right now. Here we go. <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? <laughs> no. Right, right, meow is that got me. That got oh, me a little bit. Great, um, that's, your, your a, cat... that's, a thro- that's a throwaway joke, and you laughed at it. That's awesome. I love that. I love no, one no, of no. those. Lines. Your cat, I see your cat being a little aggro in in the the home studio over there. Yeah, he's being a mess. Um, I'm wondering if he just watched if he's if he's a little upset about the Kings game. No, he's not a basketball cat. Okay. He's a football cat. <laughs> okay. He gets dialed. Got little it. golf. I think the the white ball on the screen really like gets you know. Really gets him rolling. Sure. You see that thing sure. bouncing around? Yeah, we're we're apologizing for being a little delayed on the the YouTube stream. We just had to lock into King's Sons, and it was uh not not the result the Kings were looking for. Tough. Um not <laughs> blowing a, a twenty two point lead in the second half to uh to the Phoenix Suns. So that was a little uh hard to believe, so we had to watch it in real time and uh, an ugly one for sure. 
an ugly one. Um, Niners Packers, start... though. Yeah, that, no, let's start there. <laughs> let's start with the 49ers. <laughs> okay, great. Good. No, Good. I let's I want to start with the injury stuff before we get into the actual Packers game because I don't think there's anything more important at this point of the year, more than the bye week, more than home field advantage. There's nothing more important than being healthy. I think we saw yeah. I think we saw that specifically with Miami. It wouldn't shock me if we saw it with Buffalo, who's dealing with a ton of injuries on defense. If we saw that exposed a little bit against Kansas City, like being healthy this time of year is just so, so essential. And the 49ers, I'm going to list who didn't practice because that's easier than listing who did. The only players out of practice were Cleland Furl, Dre Greenlaw, and Logan Ryan. Logan Ryan dealing with a groin, Dre Greenlaw dealing with an Achilles, and Cleland Furl has a knee. Greenlaw and Ryan, according to Kyle Shanahan, are supposed to be back on Wednesday. They're supposed to be back in practice. So if all goes well for the 49ers, Cleveland Furl might be the only player who is ruled out because of injury for their first playoff game, which is just a monumental success for a team who's had so many seasons over the last five derailed by some sort of key injury. So is Talano Hufanga the only week one starter that they're not going to have in the playoffs? And Cleveland As of right Furrell. now. And Cleveland Furrow, right. But they did acquire Chase Young. and Yeah. Um, yeah, but start. Um, is deadline. that right? I think that offensive line's all the same. Yeah, I think that's right. Well, you might have you might have John Feliciano in um, instead of Spencer Burford, but that's probably an upgrade at this point. Yeah, I think but yeah, I right. mean, for for a team to go into the playoffs essentially with twenty one of twenty two starters that they had to opening to open the season, and I would say Chase Young is an upgrade over Cleveland Farrell if Chase Young ends up getting the start. Yeah, right. Like that just that just is a to to your point, just like a huge. Huge positive development. Getting Eric Armstead back, um, it sounds like he's going to be going to be good to go. Um, getting Jair Brown back, uh, obviously the the rookie. You know, I, I don't know that he was he was amazing, but I feel like there's probably a pretty steep drop off from him to you know what the other options had been. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can hear. Uh, we got we got the dog kind of freaking out here, but um, she well she's just yeah I, about, I just about Jair Brown's return. Yeah, no, she's she's juiced. And George Odom, she's a big special teams dog, so uh, she she's pumped on <laughs> she's pumped on George Odom um, getting back into the mix, returning to practice as a limited participant, yeah. shore up the the coverage units, um, because like let's be real, special teams in Niner in Niners Packers history is proven to be pretty important. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously yeah. dating back to last year. So also or last sneaky, year, two years ago, sneaky two years ago. Sneaky, sneaky key uh, div uh, play in the Niners win over the Packers at Candlestick in the Colin Kaepernick game was a muffed punt that the 49ers recovered and took in for a touchdown. Good memory by you. Later. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, no, I, <clears throat> I, I was, I mean, I say I, everybody talked about going into the last couple of weeks, like the Niners need the one seed if for no other reason than to get a week off and they ostensibly right. with the way they treated week 18, got two weeks off to get guys rested, to get guys healthy. And now you're seeing the benefits of that with their practice report from, from Tuesday, everything because they play Saturday, everything's moved up a day. So, so their first practice yeah. is Tuesday instead of Wednesday. So I, I, I'm, I was already pretty, pretty confident that this is the best team in the NFC. And if they're going to be this healthy throughout the postseason, I think they're going to be really, really hard to beat. Yeah, and we haven't even mentioned Christian McCaffrey, right? Oh, yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Christian McCaffrey is healthy. The calf injury that he suffered in, I believe it was Washington. Yes. Um, second last game of the season. Uh, he's he's back and he's a full participant and he's going yeah. to be good to go. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that I, mean, I think that'll be big. Somebody to split carries with Elijah Mitchell. <laughs> Someone to I lighten like we, Jordan Mason's load a little bit. I like that. <laughs> I like that we got to the benefits of George Odom being back before we got to Christian. 
Well, oh. I mean, Lily, Lily, Lily going nuts at the door. I mean, hopefully, no one's like breaking in the house right now. Uh, maybe I should pause the podcast and go check. Be but great for content. it reminded me. Like, like it, it reminded me. Not, but... <laughs> Lily freaking out reminded me of, of the importance of George Odom. So <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, does Danny Gray get activated this week? It's his last week to get activated, or he has to go on IR for the rest of the year. No, I don't think so either. Anyways. That's all I have to say. That would be a wild. That would be a wild change of develop, like a wild. Yeah, because they'd have to heart cut somebody who plays. Like, right. Yeah. So right, no, like I, they've I, elevated like Bill Snead and Chris Conley all year. Mm -hmm. Over, you know, like Danny Gray has been healthy enough to play, but they've just not thought highly enough of what he could contribute to the team. Hey. And so. Dead. Did you see what did you see what Bill Sneed said about Tua after the game the other night? After the Dolphins lost? No. He was basically like the Dolphins are never going to win as long as Tua is playing soft. And then put a 100 emoji, he said which that? is how, yeah, which is how you know he means business. Woo. Yeah. That's a crazy thing to say from a practice squad guy. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to take my phone away if I was an NFL player, dude. I would I would have all the takes. It'd be tough. There is, there's no world where I'm tweeting or Instagramming anything if I'm in the NFL. That's right. I'm not like depending, depending on, uh. depending on, depending on like the marital situation. I'm probably not having Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> or I'm definitely not having X, formerly Twitter. That's definitely not a thing that would happen. See, I crave attention too badly. Like it's so I need to be getting my take. I might have a burner account or something, but I would definitely be getting takes off on the internet. No, um, I think that injury wise is the best case scenario for the 49ers. Do you think that facing the Packers, the number seven seed, is the best case scenario for the 49ers? I think it is. No, because you think it is. Okay. Yes. I don't. Um not necessarily like I do think the Packers are a little bit scary because of how hot they've been and they're just not really a known commodity, right? Like they're one of those teams that's that might like they, they're just like riding a rocket ship right now, right? Like Jordan Love has thrown um his last eight games, the numbers are absurd. He's mm -hmm. he has uh what. 18 touchdowns, one interception, 112.7 rating over his last regular season games. And that doesn't even include what he did in Dallas when he threw. Yeah, he was even better touchdowns. in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, threw three touchdowns, had no picks. Um, and just looks like he has a great feel. Like he's just, he looks like he's not in his first year playing quarterback. He just looks extremely comfortable. Yep. Um, and that's not, like, I'm not trying to say that I think the Packers are in any way a bad matchup for the 49ers. I think the 49ers are going to score a ton of points, right. or at least they should score a ton of points on the Packers' defense. But, I mean, watching football this weekend, the best-case scenario for the Niners would have been playing the Eagles. Yeah, no, I the get The Eagles were awful. The yeah. Eagles weren't tackling anybody. They had they they looked like they were they they didn't want to be there like they were so bad that I was, it was you know like that would that to me feels like the team that if you're if you want like if you're trying to pick out the team that you're most likely to beat or that's going to be the easiest out it feels like Philadelphia at this point. I was really resistant to the idea that the 49ers quote unquote broke the Eagles because I think that's typically kind of a short sighted thing and just a thing that fans say to uh, you know have bragging rights or a, tr a, a way to talk trash about another team. But I really think that's kind of what happened. It feels like the 49ers beat the Eagles so bad that it made them look internally at some of their issues and they realized that they weren't fixable. And yeah. that just rot from the core just kind of, and, and then even up until like, because we watched that team be really good all through last year. And even going into the playoffs, I'm sitting there and I'm going, dude, like they're favored over Tampa. Vegas knows something. The Eagles are going to be better in the playoffs. They're going to lock in. They're going to, and they just didn't, dude. I was floored by how poor they looked. Vegas had to make a ton of money on that game, I would think, right? Either that or they lost a like, ton of money. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I, I just think that I, I think it's more likely that the, the Eagles were favored because of where all the money was coming from. 
No, right, you're right. And where all the That's money definitely going. correct. Yeah. So if there's a bunch of Eagles money going in, like that line has to be pushed because there's no way you can look at the way they've played. And then because that saying they're three point favorites on the road in a playoff game is purely based on reputation. It's just ignoring what's happened mm -hmm. the second half of the season since the Niners game. So mm -hmm. to me, the best case scenario would have been the Eagles, but the Eagles didn't even have the heart to, to beat Tampa Bay. Um, and just like playing some of the worst defense like you'll ever see, really. You have guys in coverage like running into each other, falling over, leaving dudes completely uncovered, and then three or four guys in the secondary having opportunities to tackle dudes and just kind of letting them run by yeah. <laughs> run by you into the end zone. Like just yeah. really embarrassing stuff. Honestly, like I'm pretty surprised it's Tuesday night. I'm pretty surprised that there hasn't been news about Nick Sirianni losing his job. I don't know how you can bring back Sirianni after the way they collapsed. Yeah, I was I was kind of against that going into so I do a, I do this video series with USA Today, not to brag, called Four Down Territory. I do that with Doug Farrar. And we talked about that. We recorded before the Monday night game. And I was like, I think you gotta be patient with them. Da 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 da. da. After seeing how they played in the playoffs, I changed my mind. That was yeah. abominable. So I think you're right. Okay, in a vacuum, playing the Eagles would have been the best case scenario, but I also don't think there was a scenario where the Eagles were going to look as bad as they looked and also beat Tampa. Right. Like if they won that game, they would have looked like last year's Eagles where it's like, oh, they lock in. And now they're going to San Francisco to face a team that already embarrassed them once. Like that would be the the counter argument. But to your point, if the 49ers got to pick their second their their first playoff team, I think they would have picked Philly just based on the weekend performances. They were so bad. I can't I can't remember a team like a good team falling apart without like, yeah, they, they were missing AJ Brown, but it just looked like they had no soul. It was, it was just really jarring the way that they, they I saw just, some, it felt like they rolled over. Like it was evident early on in the game. It was like, no, they're losing. They are, they're not, oh, they were a, toast. A, a capable, they were, they were toast early on. It wasn't like, you know, like the Niners Browns game, right? Like, it, there were, it never felt like the Niners weren't playing hard or like, yeah, you know, the Niners just, yeah, like lost. sloppy. They'll be sloppy every now and again. Right. But they never lose. You never watch a game and you're like, God, these guys are just being dogs today. Yeah. Like that never happens. And right. that's, that's what it felt like watching the Eagles. Like they couldn't do anything on offense. And I mean bizarre. that there, there are a few different, the, the reason why I'm so surprised that Sirianni hasn't gotten fired yet. It's, you know, it's not only like the vibes of the team were obviously horrendous, right? It just seemed like everyone was super disinterested in playing hard and, and playing winning football. But it was also like, maybe the players were like that because there were no answers offensively. It was like, yeah, Todd Bowles blitzes. He's like known for his blitzing. Right. And the Eagles just had no answers for the blitz, like right. over and over again. It's like, guys, like you have dudes who are good with the ball, like after the catch, like run a screen, do something, yeah, do some, like do something to counter the blitz because this isn't a surprise that Todd Bowles is blitzing you. That's like what he's built his career on as yeah. a defensive coach and blitzing. And the Eagles had no answers for that. And I know it felt like the players knew they had no answers. And that's one of the reasons why they're so checked out. Yeah. They just quit. It was man. That was weird. <clears throat> it was a really poor performance. And then, the other not not strangely poor performance because it was a little more expected dallas looked so bad against green bay <clears throat> and that's part yeah. of why at first i'm i'm watching this game I'm like man niners might have to play this team when it was 14 nothing it's like man niners might have to play this team that's they look really good and then you just watch dallas as that game went on <clears throat> i don't know what they were I don't know how much to credit the Packers and how much to say, oh, it's on Dallas for being bad. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go watch it again. But there's part of me that goes, man, maybe the 49ers are just are just facing this buzzsaw and it's going to be this shootout and they're going to have a really hard time slowing down this offense that's really all gelled at the same time. It's a lot of young players. It's Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks and uh, what's his what's their Tucker Tucker Craft? Is that his name? The tight end? Luke Musgrave. Luke Musgrave is the, is the name I was looking for. Uh, Jordan Love <laughs> is is playing as good as any quarterback in the league right now. Aaron Jones looked awesome against the Cowboys. But 
conversely, the Cowboys haven't been able to stop the run the last few weeks. Um, Dan Quinn, from everything I've read, did nothing different defensively than he normally does. And they go a lot of dime, like light boxes. They go with these safety linebacker hybrids that are more defensive back than linebacker. And it makes them susceptible to the run. And the Packers just took full advantage of that and got Green Bay on their heels, which maybe that's why Jordan Love played so well. So I I think that the reason I think it's the best case scenario for the Niners is because I'm A, I think they'll score on Green Bay and take advantage of their defense in ways that the Cowboys didn't. And I think if the Cowboys hadn't fallen behind and gotten punched in the face immediately in that game, I think they probably still would have had a ton of yards and a ton of points. Stack through for 400 yards and they had 37 first downs. Like, that's bananas. Yeah. So, I think their defense is susceptible. And I just think that Jordan Love... I, I'm interested to see him in a game script that is not as favorable as the one he had in his first playoff game. Because I don't think it will be. Yeah. This dog, man, just fired up over George Odom. Bicep yeah, getting right. Really, she really wants she really um, wants us to talk about him. Yeah. Uh so <laughs> I think it was a combination of both things, right? Like I think it was a combination of the Packers playing really well and the Cowboys just not being ready. Mm -hmm. um or just not being like and we talked about it in the last pod but i i remember seeing a video clip of richard sherman mm -hmm. um friend of the podcast saying before the packers cowboys game that um he thinks the packers or he thought going in it's like if the packers get after him early and get a lead then all of a sudden the cowboys who are heavily favored who are not good at playing under pressure mm -hmm. are playing really tight like you can get them you could get them, you know, like the Cowboys being sort of a front running team against a lot of bad teams. Like if you hit the Cowboys first, then you could put them in a tailspin potentially. And that's what Sherman said before the game. And he was absolutely yeah. right. Like that's exactly, exactly what happened. happened. <laughs> it's like they jump, they, they go down and score and it's like, okay, like teams tend to score on their opening drive. Like that's not yeah. always, you know, like those, there were some like Niners Rams games in the run during like the run where the Niners were just dominating the Rams were like, I think the 2019 game they gave up an opening touchdown i was like man that was a really bad defensive drive and then they just the niners defense just shellacked them the rest of the game right oh the one like in la one in la in 2019 yeah. there are just some like opening drives like good defenses will still will give up touchdowns game scripts good or the you know the, the scripted plays are good or whatever um but then as the game goes on it changes Packers scored in their first drive and it just didn't change. It was just like, oh, like the Cowboys just aren't going to have any answers for Aaron Jones and the running game. And the Cowboys, like to your, to your point about like Dan Quinn playing a lot of diamond stuff, like how are you supposed to stop the run if you're in, if you're in time the whole game? I have no idea. Right. Like the, the Niners are pretty good at stopping the run in nickel, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they, they can, they can yeah. play the run in nickel, which is one of the strengths of their defense. Mm -hmm. um, and they can absolutely play it really, really well in base. So I think that's, that's, you know, that'll be different for the Packers. Like Aaron Jones is, has been problematic for the Niners in the past, yeah. but I do think like the Packers are a little bit scary because they don't really have anything to lose. And this is like kind of a human nature conversation for me. It's like, what do they have to lose? They like, they, they just beat the Cowboys. Why couldn't they go upset the Niners? Like Matt LaFleur sure. knows Kyle Shanahan, like they're, the Niners probably aren't going to do anything that the Packers haven't seen before. Sure. Um, but again, you can know the 49ers are running left behind Trent Williams and George Kittle and Kyle Juszczyk and you still can't stop it because you, you know, just because you know it's coming doesn't mean you're going to beat those guys, beat those blocks. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. So I I'll ultimately, like as good as Jordan Love could potentially play, the Niners defense being rested is a huge advantage. Nick Bosa, totally Nick Bosa, it feels like we're at some point in Nick Bosa's career, he's just going to have a dominant postseason. Right, like, and and he's had really good postseasons in the past, but like, mm -hmm. like a a signature Nick Bosa postseason feels like it's going to come at some point, and yeah. I feel like we're kind of right for it, particularly with them coming off a bye week. Mm -hmm. And then I just don't think the Packers defense can stop the 49ers over four quarters. I'm totally. Like I think I would be, I would be surprised if the 49ers didn't score four touchdowns. 
Where do you think the Packers finish this season in defensive DVOA? 22nd. No, worse. 22nd was the Rams, oh, oddly enough. Oh, wow. Uh, 27th. Ahead of mm. Seattle, Philly, Denver, Washington, and Arizona. <clears throat> So their defenses, defense which the Niners deep. didn't really have. Yeah, the Niners didn't really have any issues against those defenses. Hey, where do you think they? Where do you think their teams rank? Special teams. Yeah. Are they? Aren't they still like really bad on 31. special teams? Yeah, thirty-one. Yeah. Just and saying, they were George bad. A game changer. And they were bad a couple years ago. And yeah, special teams ended s- up being swung the a game. game. Yeah, man, Dallas. <laughs> Dallas's first 50% half, offense, 50% defense, and 50% special teams. Dude, is that your three keys? <laughs> We're doing three keys right yeah. now. <laughs> special uh, teams, keys to the game. So the I didn't got the Packers first half possessions. Punt interception, punt interception, which was a pick six. And then they scored a touchdown on the last play of the half where they nearly smoked the entire clock by throwing short of the end zone with no timeouts and like nine seconds left. They're a disaster, man. Yeah. Oof. Yikes. Anyways. Uh, question in the YouTube chat. Um, Are we concerned about Jake Moody? Yeah. In in so far as I don't know what you're getting from him. I'm not necessarily like, oh, he's definitely going to miss his first kick. But I'm also not like, oh, he's definitely going to make it. Yeah. Every he was supposed to be nails in big spots and he hasn't been. Money Moody. Yeah, that guy. But apparently yeah, I mean, it's, it's just so it's apparently it's just Michigan W week with the <laughs> national championship and then the Fab Five getting together, getting back together, and the Lions winning a playoff game for the first time since Herbert Hoover was president. Um it's a big week, big week for the mitten, so maybe Jake Moody bounces back. Um I was gonna say the money moody thing, it's it's weird. Um I guess it's it's not weird that that Moody would be talked about that way because everyone everyone at Michigan is so honest and just never. Hey, did you see Connor Stallions is doing cameos? That's the least surprising thing I've ever heard. He's you Shouts can pay him, seventy dollars. National champion. Yeah, knows his way around That's a camera. Nation- That's national champion Connor Stallions to you. Sorry. No, I just I really enjoyed um I really enjoyed Jim Harbaugh chastising the media for asking him about his future and and being completely aghast that the slime ball media would would dare to ask him questions about his future ahead and after the national championship game while he's interviewing for multiple head coaching jobs in the NFL. Yeah, well, you and know, you're not gonna you know, just because he's he's opening the door doesn't mean he's walking through it. Well, it's funny you should mention that because he's also reportedly in negotiations with Michigan. Should he come back to have a clause in his contract where he would not be able to get fired if NCAA sanctions come down upon him for the cheating scandal? This guy's this guy's like baking a big old cake and eating all of it. Shouts to Jim Harbaugh, man, national champion. (laughs) <laughs> leaving for the league while also setting himself up to be completely absolved from any sort of blame from the cheating scandal. Just great stuff. Can we talk about Nick's story on ESPN? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> uh, Nick Wagner, our favorite cast member and friend of the program. I think the friend of the program of all the friends of the program. He is the friend of the program. He's definitely one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he is the dude. Uh, he's graduated to that. I'm comfortable saying that. No, um, he wrote a story on ESPN about Brock Purdy and, um, why the 49ers believe in him and his, uh, just kind of his thought process and the way that he has gone from 
final pick in the draft and some different events in his life that have gotten him to this point. It's an incredible story. Really, really well done. And there's an anecdote in there about how Kyle Shanahan sat Brock Purdy down during the offseason and was like, you're the starting quarterback. You're the dude. Which is not shocking to anybody that was paying attention. But right. then Purdy says that Shanahan went, unless Tom Brady wants to play here, in which case, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is wild. But it makes sense. But also, I I don't know if the 49ers would have been demonstrably better in that case. And I know that sounds insane because it's Tom goddamn Brady, <laughs> but he would have been what? 46 behind an offensive sure. line. That was not awesome. I, I don't know. I, I'm not totally convinced that the 49ers <laughs> would have been way better if Tom Brady was their quarterback this year. Well, the production they got from Purdy all year was historic. So to say, like, there's, I mean, there's a reasonable case to be made that Tom Brady would have put up historic numbers also. Um, but, you know, like, there, there's still the question when it comes to Brock Purdy about being able to come back after they're down. Right. Like, that was, that was kind of the thing that reared its head in the, in the team's three losses that mattered was that they fell behind, had opportunities to come back in the fourth quarter. And Purdy just frankly wasn't good in those scenarios. Um, he was good enough in Cleveland after being pretty bad throughout the vast majority of that game, but he was good enough to Cleveland to put them in position for a game winning field goal. And again, that was that to me, that Cleveland game was super fluky in the sense that like a whole lot of weird things happened um, mm -hmm. in a game. The 49ers lost by one, including the kicker missing two kicks. Um, what should have been a fumble deep in Brown's territory at the end of the first half costing the 49ers potentially you know points like that should have been a game the 49ers won by two or three or four points right um but the minnesota game the cincinnati game those scenarios where the 49ers are down i feel like they might be in a better spot had tom brady been the guy because we've seen tom brady come back um a time or two in big moments and that's still frankly like that's still a, i think a fair question about purdy going into the playoffs like, I think the 49ers are probably going to have their way with the Packers defense early on, and they'll probably do the thing where, you know, they score their 17th point at the end of the first half and then end up getting the, the second half kickoff and then scoring a touchdown and going up by, mm -hmm. you know, 14 or whatever, 17, and then just kind of running away from, from there. But, and, you know, if they move on, it's the Lions, probably, probably would be the Lions in the NFC Championship game. I don't know that that is necessarily a game that you look at and like say that's going to be a close one and the 49ers are going to need Brock Purdy to to author a comeback drive in the fourth quarter. So you play it out and just game it out like so you get to the Super Bowl and the 49ers are down by four points and there's six minutes left. Like, do you yeah. feel awesome about Brock Purdy there or would you rather have Tom Brady? Well, considering that Tom Brady had more fourth quarter <laughs> comebacks between his age 36 and 45 seasons than Brock Purdy has starts in the NFL. Uh, mm. Yeah, I get it. But I'm also not 100% but, certain that they're in this position with the one seed if Tom Brady's their quarterback. Sure. I mean, it's it's hard to say, like, just from the, the Like, he turned 46 the in August. No, you're you're not wrong. Like he is you're hella forty six. He's not a little forty six. He is like way forty six. Well, until the Ravens game, Purdy was the clear favorite to win MVP and was gonna break the gonna break the all time record for yards per attempt. Like it yeah. was like quite literally one of the most efficient seasons that was trending towards becoming the most efficient passing season in NFL history. Yeah. And like, that's not really, that's not hyperbole. That's what Purdy did this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, like that, that is a high bar to set even for Tom Brady. And that's not to say that Tom Brady couldn't have been a really, really, really good player for the Niners had he been playing for them. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I just, to me, like, that's kind of like, it, it's kind of a wash, like the product, the idea that like, 
you know, I think the, the Niners offense still would have been one of the best in the league with Tom Brady, potentially if he stayed healthy. But mm-hmm. the difference is, I think, is the way you feel about going into a playoff game and particularly a big moment when you might be trailing with Tom Brady versus Brock Purdy, frankly, because we haven't seen Purdy come through in that scenario just yet. Yeah, no, that that makes that makes sense. Because I think you're right. Like we, you know, we talk about Jake Moody, but I really think that going into this playoff game, like let's say Green Bay's offense is just a buzzsaw right now. And the Niners defense gives up 30 points. And they're down 30 to 28 with a minute and a half to go. And the Niners have the ball on their own 25 with no timeouts. That's, that's a spot that like of all the spots that Brock Purdy is really good in, you don't know because the sample size hasn't been great this year. But, right. I don't know. I Tom Brady up. threw for 44,408 yards from his age 36 season on. That's outrageous. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, ne- I'm just neck really... deep in Tom Brady stats now. <laughs> he was extremely, extremely good at playing football. Yeah, that's why um, yeah. Tom Brady from age, dude, from age 36 to 45, okay? Tom Brady, age 36 to 45, has more passing yards than Joe Flacco. Wow. Well, like, for his whole career. That's crazy. Tom Brady, age 36 to 45, is 18th all time in passing yards. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a bad take by me. That's wild. Um, okay. Maybe this is a bad take. So here's some stats. I couldn't I couldn't find the um and I'm sure oh, I like wait. how Kyle Shanahan. Oh, I like okay. how Kyle Shanahan was like, I saw enough out of Tom Brady to think that he should start for our team. And I, Kyle Madsen, an asshole, am like, nah. <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, so, okay. I did find uh, Brock Purdy's Brock Purdy's numbers. Uh, so when trailing this year, Brock Purdy has seven picks, five touchdown passes. When leading, he has 20 touchdowns and two picks. Wow. So he has basically 127.9 passer rating when leading and an 82.4 passer rating when trailing. Hmm. Jesus. Is Brock Purdy so, a front runner and soft? Your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> no, and and again, I'm not saying that like this is this is I'm not trying to denigrate Brock Purdy or anything that he's right. done because I think those numbers are like extreme small sample size theater. I think the Browns game was just like a slop fest in bad weather. I think he was probably concussed in the Minnesota game. Um, And the Bengals game, that was, it was just kind of like a weird play like that. Um, There were a couple weird plays in that game. And the Niners were, you know, coming, coming off a short week where they traveled back from East coast time. And then, um, or no, it was Minnesota East coast time. Are they central? Anyway, it doesn't matter. They're They're traveling back on a short week. Play, playing a team that was that was on it coming off its buy um so i think there's like the the trailing stuff is small sample size theater but still we haven't seen brock purdy be that guy in that situation yet and yeah. to me that's like the and only I think, question I think that's, like that I, is the biggest question they didn't win a game all year when they were trailing at halftime and is that a sustainable model in the playoffs when you were playing the best of the best teams every single week yeah that's tough. I mean, that's 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 ultimately the question, right? Like in games that the forty that that the final margin was between zero and seven points. So in one score games, in Brock Purdy starts, the Niners were one and two. Wait, and in games where in one score games that Brock Purdy started this year, mm-hmm. the Niners were one and two. Jesus. And then in games decided by eight to 14 points they were two and two 
And in I'll games no- that were 15 points plus, the Niners were 9-0. and I'll note that their one win in a one-score game was a field goal by the Rams that cut it from 10-7 to with no time left. Fair. So... <laughs> It's 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 not it's not really even the one, yeah, man. Right, they're, so they they're, should be. They're I think that their their formula of get ahead, and just kind of bend teams to their will, it can work against Green Bay. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work against Detroit, presumably in the NFC title game, and I certainly don't think it's going to work against the Ravens if they meet them in the Super Bowl. So they're going to have to find different ways to win and new ways to win on the fly in the playoffs. The Niners are so good that when they're healthy and they don't turn the ball over, they're basically impossible to beat. Yes. But the the reason why they get in these scenarios, and there's obviously correlation to these stats, right? The reason why they get into these games where it's close is because they're turning the ball over. Mm -hmm. Right? Like Purdy in those. Yeah. In those scenarios in close games like the one score games he's got two touchdowns and three picks eight to 14 Mm -hmm. he's got six touchdowns and seven picks the 15 plus games he's got 23 touchdowns and one pick yeah right so like it's basically all coming down to brock Purdy's turnovers and so if they're not turning the ball over they're just impossible to beat and it's not going to be close yeah yeah i need to do a little more homework on green bay but we will talk about them more in our Thursday podcast. Uh, real quick, I want to talk to you about Prize Picks. It is my favorite daily fantasy sports site, and honestly, uh, America's largest daily fantasy sports site. And you should join. So here's what we did for the wild card weekend. There was no 49ers, so I picked something uh, from each, not from each game, but I but I moved around the game. So I had Joe Flacco, less than 272 and a half passing yards. That did not come to fruition. He got a bunch of garbage time stats. That was a bummer. I had Matthew Stafford more than 275 and a half passing yards. Nailed it. I had Tyreek Hill less than 86 and a half receiving yards. Nailed it. But then a gang of L's. Jaden Reed more than 49 and a half receiving yards. No. Tua Tunga Vailoa less than five and a half rushing yards. No. He had nine rushing yards on like the second play of the game. Super annoying. And then Patrick Mahomes less than 249 and a half passing yards. No. So that's a giant L for your boy. But uh, I'm going to be back on the horse because there is not a better way to enjoy sports than with prize picks. It is the easiest daily fantasy sports site. You jump in two to six players. You pick more or less on their stat projections. And then you watch the winnings roll in. Join today at prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Use promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to $100. That is prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to $100. Do better than me. We give our picks every Thursday. You can just fade me. Just, just fade, uh, fade me too. Make an entry. <laughs> make an entry that's opposite what Chris and I do, and you'll be golden. <laughs> do a power play because, I mean, the power <laughs> play is really the only way to go. And just cool. do the opposite of all my picks. Yeah, there you go. All right. You'll probably win. Very good. Um, before we get out of here, injury updates. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, Greenlaw situation, not a concern for apparent, according to Kyle Shanahan, said Greenlaw should be back in practice on Wednesday. So hopefully uh, by the time you listen to this, uh, you'll know that. All right. Uh, subscribe, rate, review, wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that little thumbs up for us. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the little notification bell. So you get a notification every time we go live and we will talk to you next time. We'll have a little preview pod for you on Thursday. That'll come out Friday. So make sure to check your feeds previewing the 49ers divisional round matchup against the green Bay Packers.